Hello guys, feels good to be back. Today, as promised, we are starting a series of episodes on how to prototype your designs. So let's start by talking about prototyping as a designer. For me, this whole debate started with a product called Facebook Home. You guys remember that? So Facebook Home was this Android skin that would inject Facebook into your lock screen, basically. And with it was introduced the Facebook chat heads, uh, which you can still find in Facebook's apps today, I think. Although beautiful, the product was a flop. But the most interesting story that came from it was that designers at Facebook used Quartz Composer to prototype the whole interaction and design. So people went nuts because even back then, Quartz Composer was already an old and outdated piece of software by Apple. The fact that people were using this to create meaningful uh, products came out of nowhere, really. So this whole trend in enthusiasm by designers was set in motion. Pun intended. And after then, we've seen a great and healthy number of new tools to help designers achieve interesting and beautiful interactive and motion designs, right? Tools such as Framer, Origami, Pixate, Marvel, InVision, amongst many, many others. I've used Quartz Composer back in the Facebook's home fever, and the learning curve was bananas. But today, there are a ton of new tools way more approachable than back then. And I'm putting together this very own series of episodes exploring some of these tools. So let's start with Framer. Framer is a tool built on the Framer.js, uh, which is an open source prototyping framework, which lets you create powerful interactions and animations by writing code. JavaScript code, to be more precise. CoffeeScript code, to be even more precise. I like being precise. If you never wrote a single line of JavaScript and have no background in programming whatsoever, well, all is not lost. Believe me, this is really, really very simple, okay? Uh, in the Framers website, uh, you have the Learn section right here. And that and the documentation can give you a pretty good overview on, you know, how the thing actually works. And hey, I'm here to help as well. So. You can go to the to the website and you can download a free trial right here. Uh, links in the show notes below, as usual. And if you like what you see, go ahead and buy the damn thing for seventy nine ninety nine dollars. I know it's a it's a little bit pricey, but so are a lot of professional tools, right? I recommend you play around with it the, with a with a trial first, and if you feel you want to commit, go ahead. I think I think it's worth the price. I mean, it's like same cost as a PlayStation game, right? So after you download it, uh, you go ahead and open it. So this is what you get, okay? So you get this uh, window, uh, two column window. So on the left, you have the, the code editor, right? And on the right, you have a live preview. And if you click around, this is actually interactive, right? And it comes with pre-written code. So let's explore this code. In order to understand Framer, you have to wrap your head around these four different concepts, okay? So, all of the objects in Framer are called layers, right? Kind of like in Sketch. So, if you have a background photo, that's a layer. Uh, you have a button floating on top, that's a layer. You have a list of content that you want to scroll through, guess what? That's a layer. So, and if you check out the code it's in here you can see that if you look for a layer since i mentioned it a lot you can see that there's some layer mentioned here so if you go check it out this is how you create a layer so you type the name of the layer equals new layer and it gives you some attributes like the width and height uh if it is from an image you can you know point it to the image file and then have a bunch of methods but don't worry about that now Okay, let's go to the second concept, which is uh, states. Now, if we are animating stuff, it means that stuff moves around, probably. So if a box goes from left to right, it has two states, the one where it's on the left and the second state where it's on the right. So again, let's look at the example that they give us here. Uh, if you look for states, all right, so here you have it. Uh, you have the icon layer, which is something, the, the name of the layer that we gave above, so it's the same. 
So it's referring to this layer and it's going to add states, okay? Don't worry about the syntax right now. I'm going to go through it all in, in the next episode. So you can see that we have second, third, fourth states, okay? And if you play around with it in the in the preview here on the right, when you click on it, so it moves to one, then moves to two, moves to three, with the fourth, which being the initial state. So there's four states. So if we go trying to just look at the code and try to figure out what it's doing, so we have the name of the states probably, and we have the Y, which you, you can guess is the position, so in the Y axis. So uh, you can see the second state is the lowest value for Y, so it means that it's up, and it's gonna scale down because it's lower than one, so it's gonna make it smaller, and then it's gonna rotate Z, I don't know, I guess it rotates. Cool. And then the third state, it goes a little bit, you know, down. It's going to make it way bigger and it's going to blur it. The fourth is going to be a little bit up, uh, scale it a little bit down, blur it a little bit less, and it's going to rotate again. Okay. And if you actually play with it, that's actually what it's doing, right? Look, the initial state, it goes up, uh, makes it smaller and rotates, make it bigger and blurs, make a little bit smaller, blur a little bass blur a little less, sorry, and rotate it again. So those are states, okay? And it's pretty it's pretty easy to, to, to grasp the concept. Basically, if one thing to move around, you say you, where you want it to go and to do in the process, right? Okay, so the third concept is animation. The layer is not moving between states like instantly, right? It has some kind of animation. So, and you guessed it, I think animation will set how the layer will transition between states, right? And from this example here, you can see that it has a spring. I guess you can assume like, you can really think of a spring and it makes sense kind of thing bounces like boing, right? So it has spring in a bunch of values. Again, let's not go through the values right now. I'm going to leave that for the next episode. So you know, there's some kind of attributes that it can give to an animation so to so animate differently depending on those values okay so to finish off there's the fourth concept which is very simple this one it's basically a trigger it's something that happens to actually make the thing move right to make the thing transition now these events can be just time based just like go through it loop always be changing but that's an event i guess uh, here, if you wanted to, if you want to see the code, what we have, we have an event click. So basically, what I was saying is, and you can see here, like the 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 layer on this layer, and we're gonna have an event which is a click. So when you click on this layer, basically you have to read it backwards. What's gonna happen? The icon layer, the state of that icon layer is gonna go next. So it's gonna run through the states, which is basically what's happening. Every time you click on it, it will go to the next state, right? It's pretty simple, okay? So this is running a little longer than I thought, and in the next episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to prototype an app. Like, I'll start with the design made in Sketch, and I'll show you how you can import your design into Framer, and we'll build a simple scrollable list with some clickable buttons, with some fancy bouncing, okay? Um, I promise we'll be up before the end of this week, like, probably two, three days, and while you wait, I really suggest you experiment with the app. So download a trial, play around with it. This is actually one of my preferred methods of, of actually learning. I just play with it, try to break it. And if you break it, try to fix it, okay? So this is what I suggest. You download the app, but you don't have to learn syntax and all that. Just try it messing with the with a, with a value. So in this spring, let's say it's 500. Well, dang it, let's make it 100. How does that change? Ooh, now it's slower, so that must mean time. This guy's at zero, let's make it 30, just see what happens. Whoa, that's crazy fast, okay. And uh, what happens when you drag an image on top? Let's try it. I have an image right here, let's drag it on top of Framer. Say what? You have a new layer, right? And if you can see here, this layer, this is a new code that just appeared like automatically. So it's very similar to this one right here, which is referencing the framer icon PNG. And I just 
reference this home PNG. Let's see what happens if I just copy this text and put it here. Oh my lord. That's right. Let's delete this. Just like that, I have a Sketchcast bouncy logo and that's awesome and I'm going to play with it for three hours now. Okay guys, uh, play around with it. It's lots of fun. And next episode, let's make a real app. All right. Okay, guys, talk to you later. Bye.